What is up, heroes? This is Minite Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Professor Layton in the Curious Village. In the last episode, all we did was a single puzzle. A single puzzle that got me really frustrated, and I did not have a great time, and I doubt many of you had a great time yourself. So thank you for your patience through that. Again, um, what I find most frustrating about it all is just the, um, the, the lack of clarity with regards to the rules. Um, I find myself frustrated when I'm spending a lot of energy and time uh, trying to figure out what the puzzle maker intended rather than actually trying to find a solution to the puzzle. So, yeah, um, if that wasn't apparent from the previous times I got frustrated and whatnot. Uh, so I don't plan on dwelling on it too much. Overall, like I said, a lot of the puzzles have been excellent. And I'm just looking forward more so to what lies ahead. So, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna progress with that. This floor doesn't appear to have any any puzzles set up for us. Okay, so if we climb this spiral staircase, maybe we'll reach the top floor. I think you may be right, my boy. Come, let's hurry. Are we really almost at the top? They're not gonna throw us any more puzzles? Is there anything like hidden in here? <laughs> A hint coin, of course. Um, alright, well I guess I guess we'll head on up then. Oh my gosh! What is it? It's like a full-on house! Our view was obscured from the ground, but who'd have suspected a charming cottage like this here? Look, the lights are on, Professor. Is this where Flora lives? It would appear that someone is living here. And with that, we've completed Chapter 9. Is there is there a Chapter 10? Is this the end of the game? We'll save our progress. But... What? It's not starting at chapter 10. Um, is there anything else of interest around here? I don't think so. Well, alright, I guess. I guess we can see what the door has in store for us. You've reached the top of the tower! One, continue into the house, or two, return to the village to explore- <gasps> This is totally the end of the game! This is totally the end of the game! Alright, um, so we've only solved 113 puzzles. We've only solved 113. I would imagine there are 120 puzzles in the game. And given the top of the tower seems like it is the end of the game, and there may be a one last puzzle or something, um, we've definitely missed some puzzles. And for those of you that haven't seen me go through a playthrough before, um, I'm very much a completionist, and especially when completing the game involves things I like. And in this case, um, playing the puzzles is something I enjoy. So, what I'm actually going to want to do is complete those puzzles before I go and see that ending. And it also makes me think that we need to figure out this in business before we do that. Yeah. So let's mess around with this real quick and just see. Um, in terms of, you know, like some of these things, like the mysterious bottle. Um, that sounds pretty clearly latent. But like, knowledge of geography, I don't know, like that doesn't seem to be, there doesn't seem to be a lot that, I don't know, indicates what's really helpful, and it's not like I can see the bars on the left side and right side going up very easily, so, I don't know, um, like what's the difference between saying, I must admit, the Baron's gaze is a bit unnerving, Versus, wow, that's all I can really say. Like, who likes that more, you know? Um, I don't really know. So I'm not 100% sure on where these things different go. Or where these different things go. Because I've basically been doing that based on what the reactions are to, to separate the two. But I'm not, I'm clearly not where I need to be. So... I don't know. Um, would it be worthwhile to just put like a whole bunch of stuff on Leighton's side and see if things increase in happiness? Or is it more effective to... I don't know. Um, I don't know. <laughs> oh, an ammonite! It's all swirly on the outside. Or... What a find! It makes one reflect upon this planet's long history. Okay, well maybe Leighton likes that more, but... I, uh, yeah, I don't know. So this might be something that I actually look up a guide for. Because, again, I don't feel like I can really reason beyond what I've already reasoned. So, what I'm gonna do is check, without spoiling anything, 
where some of these remaining puzzles are, if there are any remaining puzzles, and then probably see what the guide is for the inn, because I don't see myself solving that without a guide at this point, or without, I guess, lots of time in trial and error, and that's not really something I uh, want to go through. So, let's see here. I'll, I'll be back in just a moment. Okay, so the first thing is, let's go back to the inn and clear this up. Um, and it, it, it does turn out there are 120 puzzles, and indeed I need to, um, or I don't need to, but I could have completed them up until this point. So I'm going to go back and look at that. But first I want to solve this inn business. Um, at first glance, it looks like we have quite a bit of it right, actually. The first thing I'm noticing is that... We are missing a mug, I believe, so we don't have all of the furniture. And the book, oh, interesting, that's quite a pile. It's a good thing I have this bookshelf versus now that's a lot of books. I wonder if I can read them all. You would think that the book would go with the bookshelf, but this guide actually has it under, under Luke's stuff. And then what else does he have? What else does Leighton have? He has the picture, he has the ammonite. He, he has the Baron's statue. Okay, well I guess I can't really say I'm confident that that would go with any one's particular room. And then, or we should put this up here. And then I guess Luke's side, the only other thing is this world map. Yep, that's a map of the world, it sure is big. And then the last thing is just the one more piece of furniture that goes on the left with Leighton's side. But if you look, it doesn't really seem like Either of them is particularly happy. Their happiness meter hasn't changed at all. But I'm pretty sure this is... Like, Luke should have his maximum happiness from these items. Right? Or am I... Oh, I should switch these. That's what I need to do. And that makes a huge difference. Because now those statues are no longer in the way, and all of Luke's stuff is... Oh, so that was like the huge... That was the big linchpin, keeping anything from... Either of them from becoming happier. Oh, that made a huge difference. Okay, so now now they're almost done. And you can see that the cup, or the mug, or whatever we're supposed to get would clearly fit in Layton's room. Okay, so that's... That's settled. Um, now... Now, we set out on our journey to collect the, the lost puzzles, is what we'll call them. And there aren't too many of them, luckily. I don't know how difficult they're going to be, so I don't know if this is going to be an entire episode of cleaning up. Um, oh, I believe there's actually one in there. Supposedly, there's one up here? Somewhere in the, the corner of the canopy? Is that what I'm... is that what I saw? I don't know, but I'm gonna click around here until I find out. I also wonder, were there certain puzzles only available in certain chapters? I don't think so, because if they were no longer available, then, um, then they would, uh, what's it called? They would be in Granny Riddleton's. That's where it is? Wow. <laughs> it's along that little corner in the building there. So they really mean it when it's, uh, you have to be clicking on a lot of things to find everything. Alright, so let's see what this puzzle is here. You have a big wooden cube that's painted red on all six sides. After splitting the cube into smaller parts, as shown below, you are left with 27 cubes identical in size but varying in the number of red sides per cube. How many of these 27 small cubes have just one of their six sides painted red? It's just gonna be six, right? It's the center cube from all of them, because if it's on the edge, if it's one of the border pieces, or if it's on any of the edges of the cube, it'll automatically have at least two, and if it's one of the corners where multiple edges meet, it'll be three. And if it's the center cube on any face of this larger cube, it'll only have one side painted. <clears throat> right? Have just one of their six sides painted red.
Oh, it's gonna be five. <laughs> it's gonna be five. Let me, let me see this. Okay, so you have a big wooden cube that's painted red on, oh no, it is, it does say it's painted red on all six sides. Looking at the picture, I was gonna say, oh, they're gonna say he couldn't paint the bottom face that it's on. And as a result, none of those bottom cubes have their, uh, that face painted. And now there would actually be interesting because all of the middle, middle cubes on, along each edge of each row would also count as just having one side, but, but I don't think that's what they want to say. You have a big wooden cube that's painted red on all six sides. After splitting the cube into smaller parts as shown below, you are left with 27 cubes identical in size, but varying in the number of red sides per cube. Okay. So yeah, I think it's, I think it's six. Although for a 40 pick rat puzzle, that seems too obvious. I feel like I'm missing something. I'll try it though. Because I don't see myself finding that something um, very quickly. I think I've got it. Oh, that's it. Okay. I did it. Yes. So um, that was just a little bit simpler than I had anticipated. Cool. Piece of cake. Now let's go find more puzzles. That's exactly the plan, Luke. Okay, so we are going to continue onward. And where are we going to go? We're actually going to head towards the manor. Because as I was looking through the puzzle index, we actually missed puzzle number eight. Can you believe that? Puzzle number eight of all puzzles. One of the first ten. Single digits. And it's supposedly... in the flowers over the river? Yeah, there's so much clicking I've done on this screen throughout the game. But it's crazy to think that... Anyways, indeed they are. I'm sure someone put a lot of work into raising them. Oh, that reminds me. Would you like to hear a puzzle about raising flowers? Of course! You bet, Professor. Let's hear it. Yeah, it's crazy to think I missed puzzle number 8 throughout the entirety of the game. Alright, a 20 pick rat puzzle. The easiest puzzle, presumably, we've done in a while. Alfred and Roland have been hired by a farm to sow flower seeds. They've been assigned a 10-acre plot of land and split it in half so they can work independently. <clears throat> Roland starts from the east and Alfred from the west. Alfred can plow the land at a rate of 20 minutes per acre. Roland takes 40 minutes to plow. <clears throat> oh wait, Alfred plows the land at a rate of 20 minutes per acre. Roland takes 40 minutes to plow, but sows seeds at three times the speed Alfred does. Okay, but we don't know how much per se. <clears throat> if sowing seeds on the 10 acre plot pays $100, how much of that money should go to Roland? Well, what do they get paid for? So, shouldn't it just be, I mean, I f feel like we can just forget about all of the plowing of the land and then just said, instead focus on the fact that Roland sows seeds at three times the speed Alfred does. So Roland should get three times as much money as Alfred does? Hmm. Although, oh wait a minute. So that's the tempting answer. But that's assuming they're working together. But they're working independently. Yeah. Each of them is working on half of that 10 acre plot. So each of them should get 50 bucks because they're just gonna do their own thing, right? It doesn't matter. They're never going to do any more or less work than the amount of land they sow seed for. So yeah, let's, um, let's go with 50 bucks. And I think it's just tempting to get bogged down by all that information. <clears throat> All right, I almost fell for the Thank trap, guys. Saves the day. <laughs> I almost fell for it. Each person did all the work on half the field, so the pay should be split in half. It's it's funny how tempting it was to try to get into the algebra of fi you know figuring it out with both the plowing and the sowing, and then it's like, oh, you get past that layer. Oh, then it's just the sowing actually, so it's three to one ratio. But then you have to get past that temptation too, and be like, oh wait, it's actually just split half and half. Correct. Good thinking, Luke. Okay, so we've gotten that. Now, what are we going to look for? Now we need to go to 
the underground area, I believe. I don't remember which specific area that is, which which sounds pretty funny. Um, I think it was over this way. Was it? Is that where we got from the park? I think it is. So let's check just to be safe. Oh, and that that reminds me, there is actually another in the park um, that we need to get. It said that it was, I think, by a poster by the cafe. Is that what it was? Um, I'm not sure. It said poster by cafe door. Is that it? Well, that, maybe that's not the cafe. <laughs> that's probably not the cafe. Um, is that poster? Oh, Robo Pupper's telling us about a, a hint coin. One that we clearly are gonna need. Really? Nothing in this area? Can I not? Okay, I guess maybe this hint coin is beyond me. Yeah, it, I've, I've deemed it no longer worth my time. Um, well, that's not the cafe, potentially. Is this the cafe? There's a hint coin. I don't know. Um, the cafe is definitely not up here. However, we can head down this way. Is this the underground area? This is under the shack. This is underground path. And this is underground area. Okay. So, supposedly this picture. Oh man, what's funny is I clicked on so many of the pictures. I remember. Anyways, look at how old this picture is. Oh right, that reminds me of a good one. Would you like to hear it? Oh, I also just realized the cafe isn't in the park. I'm sure it's, uh, it's by, it's where Crouton and all of them are, right? Anyways, pattern matching. The large shape below is made up of a pattern. A section of the shape has been removed. Of these options, which one do we insert to complete the pattern? Okay. Um... I think it's C. It's just rotated. Yeah, I guess the first thing that would be helpful would be rotating these in the right orientation. So if you take B and place it in there, um, the, the X's and the squares are switched. So that's not good. And if you take C and rotate it 180 degrees, or actually just, I guess, uh, counterclockwise. No. Oh, wait a minute, actually. You have to do a little bit more to work with it, don't you? <laughs> you do. You need to um, reflect it. I wonder if they allow that. Because if you did, it would still be... I mean, let's just say you flip it horizontally and then rotate it counterclockwise uh, 90 degrees. If you do that... The bottom left corner will be um, the the blue dot, and I think I think we'd be good. Although would the pattern be going the wrong direction? It's definitely not A. We don't need a row of um, blue circles, and I think it's the same with D. We don't need a row of. I mean, you can rotate that um, 90 degrees counterclockwise. And that becomes fairly apparent that it's not D. So yeah, I'm going to go with C. Let's give it a go and see how there it works. We go. That's not it. Oh, I guess I didn't do enough. Uh, I suppose I thought wrong. I guess I didn't do enough with the uh, <laughs> rotation and all that. Okay. I probably got a little bit hasty. All right, let's take a look. Let's take an even closer look. Oh, do I just have to rotate B 180 degrees? I totally do. I totally do. And if you do C and you if you flip it and then rotate it, it'll actually have the diagonals going in the with the wrong slope. They'll be moving in the wrong direction. They'll be going from bottom left to upper right rather than top left to lower right. Oh man, I should have seen that. 
Um, yeah, if you just rotate B 180 degrees, the blues will stay the same, but the order of the orange squares and the green X's will actually flip. So it's totally beefed. <laughs> That's my bad. That's totally my bad. I was like talking about how you could like rotate them and everything. And because because B was already in the orientation of the, the shape we were looking to fill, I got lazy and didn't actually try rotating it twice to see if it worked. So, that's a lesson for us all, right? <laughs> Gee, I didn't think it was that easy. Okay, now we got the, the China teacup. And we'll give that to Layton, who should now be pretty happy. There we go. Now this is a room any gentleman would be proud to call his own. Staying here should speed up the investigation. By the way, Luke, I have a present for you to mark this occasion. Turn off your Nintendo DS once, then restart the game with the title screen select bonuses, and you should have a new challenge from me. Now I know you're excited, but be sure to save uh, before you restart your DS. So we got the decorator's house. Huh. Okay, that's that's cool. Oh, and look at the icon for the inn. Look at that. Leighton and Luke are so excited. They're so happy. This is great, I think I could stay here forever! And then what does Leighton say? Superb! A man could get used to living in a place like this. Awesome. I am, I am very happy for you guys. <laughs> okay, so that marks that. Next up is what? We need to... We need to go into the sewer. Yeah, we need to go into the sewer. So into the sewer we will go. Alright. And then again, just to be comprehensive, is there anything... Cafe around here? <laughs> Robo Pupper, thank you for pointing out this hint coin. We were in dire need of one. Okay. Um... And then, yeah, this is where the cafe is. So, that should be the poster. Wow, I can't believe, it's so funny, some of these places, I mean, I've, I've spent so much time and I've clicked so much around, and I still miss some of these. Oh look, Professor, I found a hidden puzzle. One, 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 mystery item. Oh no, is it another, okay, I was gonna say, is it another <laughs> puzzle like the alien one? One of the four shapes below has one less match than the rest of them. While studying these four small shapes, your friend approaches you with a riddle. I'm thinking of someone that is of something that is necessary for human life. It appears in just about every house you've ever visited, and decreases in amount gradually the longer it is around. What am I thinking of? Necessary for human life in just about every house you've ever visited decreases in amount gradually the longer it is around. What decreases gradually the longer it's around? In moving one match, what could you make, right? Um, Hmm, there's nothing that immediately comes to mind, unfortunately. Necessary for human life. Is it some form of water? A food? A plant? Hmm. There's nothing that immediately comes to mind. And to think it decreases in amount gradually the longer it is around. It makes me think it's like a, I mean it's some sort of consumable resource.
the longer it's around, it decreases gradually. Oh, wait a minute. <clears throat> Actually, no, I was thinking, is it trying to spell a word? I was thinking you may be able to move a match to try to spell something like food. <laughs> but I don't quite think you can do that using one match. Oh no, you can! You can! I was thinking at first you'd want to like do this and then like you could rotate it like that. But you can actually just move the match down here. Like that. I think that's what they want. Yeah, I, I want to give this a go. I want to give this a go. It's not drawing a picture, but spelling the item. Oh, that's totally it. Oh man, I'm glad with that one. Still not my favorite type of puzzle, because it is one of those things where you just kind of have to like... Wait, wait for it to hit you. But still, the answer is food. Make sure you visit the grocery store. I knew it was some sort of consumable resource. I was thinking like food, water, etc. But I couldn't think of a picture. And then I was like, wait a minute, what if I could spell it? Anyways, I wish all puzzles were this easy. <laughs> okay, okay, Luke. All right, now we are going to head down into the sewers, and we are going to go. Oh, that's right, Robo Pupper wants us to. Did we, did we go upstairs, or what? Oh look, Professor, I found a hidden puzzle! What?! I didn't even realize that! <laughs> I wasn't even intending to get that one. That's actually really funny. Um, does Robopupper also sniff out hidden puzzles? Anyways, this is number 120. Get the ball out three. Oh. Oh, this looks fun. Can you get the red ball out of the maze? Slide obstructing blocks out of the way. This problem can be solved in 20 moves. I'm actually going to quit right now because I really like those puzzles and I want that I want puzzle 120 to be the last puzzle that we solve this way so I am actually gonna hold off on that for now um, what is Robo Pupper pointing at wow it has to be so oddly specific with where you uh, where you click and is this what's his name is this Sylvain it's you two lads again. You're a pair of odd ducks coming all this way just to see me. But lucky for you, I've got myself a darling of a puzzle and a mind to share it with you. Lovely. So yeah, we're going to do this puzzle. And again, I want to save 120 for last. Okay, you need to wash your face, but all 13 water valves in the sewer piping are shut tight. You have to open the valves to get the water flowing to your sink. So here's your challenge. Direct the water all the way to your sink by opening as few valves as possible. As few as possible. All right. So there are 13 of them. We obviously need to do it. Um, uh, they're not only they're not only an interesting web, they also run in front of and behind each other to obscure things even more. Okay, so let's start by um, looking at the, the water. If we approach from the water end, we very quickly have a branching point. And then we have another branching point, and then we have multiple branching points that ultimately don't make uh, much of a choice. Can I draw? I can't draw. Man, I wish I could draw. I wish that was a function they would just allow a little bit more flexibly. Like, why can't you draw on something like this? Um, even if it was like, oh, they don't know if you're tapping on a valve or not, why not just have a button you could click so you enter, like, draw mode, and then you could turn it off when you want to actually interact with an item in the diagram. Just some, I guess, uh, constructive criticism. But I guess one of the first things I'm noting is that there are certain segments that look like they are, uh, oh... They're not as useless as I'd anticipated. So, if we start going to the through the water, we branch, there's a fork, we go to the left, there's another branch, we go to the right, or in this case, north, I'll just use cardinal directions, north, we have one valve, like this, then we get to another fork, we branch west, then we get to another branch, we go south, and then it goes east, and then it goes south. We have four with that, and I feel like that's going to be pretty tough to beat. Um, let's take a look at some other routes. So if we were to go east at our first forking point, we get, a, we get to a second valve and a third valve already. So that is immediately going to rule this out. Because no matter what, we're going to get over four when you look at the next branching point and the fact that there is definitely one after that. So going right is not the solution. So we do have to follow our path there. Um, although... Hmm. 
Actually, we can do it in three. I didn't. I neglected that. That. Um. That when. <sighs> this is so tough to talk about. <laughs> um. Yeah. So when we branch to the right, I w I immediately focused um on everything in the top left segment, but it actually can go to the right as well. So we'll keep that in mind, and then we'll reconsider. What if we get to this first branching point? We branch right, open this valve. Also, pardon the noise in, in my household. Um, we branch right. We get here and we branch. We use this valve again. Now, what if we consider going to the right? If we go to the right, this water can flow. We don't actually have to open that valve. We can go um, west. And again, then we go under this pipe, around and around. We get to another branch point. We don't actually have to go north. We can continue to go east. And then we can open this valve to get it in three. Which is definitely less than four. And I don't think two is possible, because literally any branching point from the very beginning has at least two. So three is definitely the minimum we can do. Especially if we consider that all of the other valves are shut, um, we don't have to worry about excess water going in different paths and all that. So I think that really is all we need. We only need the three in order to create a path to the... The, uh, what's it called? To the sink. Yeah, let's try that. Well, here's my guess. We got it wrong? Oh, I was sure I had it. Hmm, the pipes are a mess, but give it another look. Is there something I'm missing? Hmm. It's as few valves as possible, right? Well, is there a way to get it in two? I don't think so. It looks impossible to me. Oh no! <laughs> it's just really roundabout. What I should have done, what I should have done was check my route and then see if there was a a path back to the water source um, with, that wouldn't run into many valves. So what we can actually do is if we follow from the water source, we get to our first branching point, we go west, then we get to another branching point, we go north. We open up this valve. Now look what happens. So naturally you think, oh, there's a short route quickly that we, allows us to get to the sink quickly. But if we take a really long and obscure route, we can actually go, keep going to our branch point, go east, and then north, so we're at the very top of the screen, then we follow along, we get to another branch point, we go south, then we get to another branch point, we go east, and now we get to another branch point, we, can, we keep going east, and now we're on the same path we were before. So we go south, we get to a branch, we go west, get to another branch, we keep going west, we go through this little loop-de-loop -loop on the lower left side of the screen, get to another branch, go east, and then we have one valve, and we're there. That's it. Wow. Okay, so I, I fell for the bait. <laughs> I fell for the bait of well, thinking I needed a shorter path, and I didn't consider all of the longest paths that had the Professor, least resistance. I solved it. That's what I really should have done, is I should have worked my way from the water source to each fork and said, if I open up this valve and then let it go, is there another path of least resistance I could go that takes me to all the way to the sink? And only once exhausting that, then opening up more valves. Um, and that would have led me to the correct answer here. So that would be the better strategy. Anyways, that was actually um, a really cool puzzle. I like that one a lot. <laughs> Wonderful work. I was sure the puzzle would floor the both of you, but I guess the joke's on me. Oh well, you win some, you lose some. Okay. Now... We only have a couple puzzles left, and of course we'll respect Robopupper's wishes and try to dig up a hint coin around here. And just like that, we are almost, we're almost there. So the next one we're actually going to want to find is in the town hall. Again, a place I've spent so much time, but apparently this right window on the side, on that side of the room has a hidden puzzle. It's too funny. Okay, red and black cards, and it's a 50 pick puzzle. 
A jokerless deck of 52 cards sits on the table. The cards are shuffled thoroughly and divided into two stacks of 26 cards, labeled A and B. If you divide the cards as described above and check the contents of each pile a thousand times, how many times could you expect the number of red cards in one pile to match the number of black cards in the other? Wow. Um... Well... So part of it is that, I mean, there are 26 black cards and there are 26 red cards, right? So, if there's ever less than 26 in one pile, there will be, well... Interesting, because there could be like 26 and 26, or 25 and 25, 24 and 24, etc., right? Um, the thing is, I think it might always match. So long as they're evenly split in terms of 26 and 26. Because let's say... Imagine you have the 26 black cards in a pile, and then you have the 26 red cards in a pile. For any assortment of shuffling... It's like a, it's a one-to-one -one thing, right? If I take one red card and switch it with a black card, I will still have matching numbers. Although, so, so, I need to figure out what they mean. Um, let's use that example again, where we switch one of the cards. So now we have 25 black cards and one red card on the left side, and then we have 25 red cards and one black card on the right side. When they say, how many times could you expect the number of red cards in one pile to match the number of black cards in the other? Actually, no, it's not as... Also, my dog is, is going crazy upstairs. Um, I think they'll always match. I really think they'll always match. Because anytime you give a red card to... Anytime you switch cards, anytime you shuffle, etc. For every, I guess, of one color you take, you have to give one of the other color. So... So even if you looked at it in terms of like, oh, how many red cards are in the, the left deck after having switched one? Does it match the number of black cards in the other deck? It does. And then if you look from the perspective of the right deck, which now has 25 red cards, does it match the number of black cards in the other deck? It does, 25. So I really think it's always going to match. So I think I'm going to go with the thousand. Right? If you check the contents of each pile 1,000 times, how many times could you expect the number of red cards in one pile to match the number of black cards? I think it's going to be 1,000. I think they'll always match. Let's see how this goes. I think I've got it. All right. I, I, was, I was a little on edge there. But I'm really glad we got that. Also, 4,024. That's, that's a pretty cool number. You can expect a corresponding number of red and black cards to show up between the piles. Okay. Yeah. That's so interesting. Um, and oh, that's actually a really cool expression for it. Yeah. And it conveys the sort of give and take I was alluding to. But that's a really cool way to express it. Whew! That was a real mind twister. So that's puzzle 118. <laughs> and now we only have one left. Wait, I didn't see... Ro Robopupper, where did you want us to, to look at the hint coin? I'm so sorry for looking away. Now, we only have one more puzzle left before we've solved the 120 and can, can go forth um, with, with the finale, I'd, I'd imagine. Um, so let's go to our puzzle index and pull up puzzle number 120 and see what we can do. Do I have to go back to it? Oh, I totally have to. 
Okay, so we'll go back to the sewer. <laughs> we'll go back. And we'll see what we can do. Given this is puzzle number 120, and it's the get the ball out puzzle, um, number three, and the second one had already been pretty tough, I think this will be a really difficult one, and it's 60 picarets. However, I really like these, so let's give this a go and see what we can do. Again, I always appreciate the symmetry of these puzzles. I wonder why that's the case. Does that have to be? I don't think so. So it's interesting from a design standpoint. Now, our first move has to be one of these blue blocks. Right? Um, the question is, do I want to move the ball first or not? I think what I actually want to do, rather than introduce the ball into play and add more obstacles, I think I'm going to move this like that. And this way I can actually... Can I do much? I can, because what I can do is bring this around and then kind of swing it like that. However... However, however... Does that actually help me much? No. That doesn't actually help. <laughs> and this, this problem can be solved in 20 moves. It's actually really reassuring. It means it's not going to be a long string that I need to invest in and try to figure out. It's something that should be fairly obvious within the first 10 to 15 moves whether or not I'm on the right track. But, um, yeah, I don't... See, actually... I could do this, and then again, the, the trick of... That can go there. This can go over here. And now what? Well, that didn't actually help much. <laughs> but it is it is always helpful to push yourself to think in uh, less typical ways. Um, just trying to see how flexible the puzzle is. It's not. <laughs> um, so let's think about this again. I did like the start. So I do want to try doing that again. And I think what I actually might want to do is instead of focusing on the red ball, focus on... Hmm. Do I stand to gain much from moving that green block? I think I'll eventually need to, but um, but right now is not the time. I need to be able to move one of these at some point. Let's see if... I can um... Yeah, I think this needs to be kind of like my opening move, no matter what. <laughs> so the question is then, what do I do here? I think I need to do that. Because then I can shift these over and bring this up. Now, this has been helpful just in terms of seeing how I can move the blocks and in future steps. Obviously, the red ball is kind of blocked off right now, but I could have very easily just switched the red ball and the purple block with an extra move. So, realistically, this isn't a, a futile um, effort. However, I do see myself running into a bit of a roadblock very soon. Because if I do this, there's not really much I can do. At 
which of course is not good. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah. Um. Hmm. All right, back to the drawing board. <laughs> Yeah, this has to be my opening move. There is really no other opening move. Um, those two moves, that is. I'm going to try a different approach now. I'm not going to move this yellow block, and instead, after moving this purple block out of the way, I'm going to move these blue blocks, like so. And this way, what I can actually do is move this green block down and utilize some of that space in the on the right. So I can do that, and then what do I want to do? What do I want to do next? Because I think, I think I'm going to want to take the red ball out into play. <laughs> um, and then I can move this blue block back. And then I can start to shift everything similarly to how I was before. Hmm. can move this red ball down, this over that way, and then this up. Oh man, I feel like we're so close. I mean, I, I should have been able to do it by now. <laughs> With three moves uh, getting to the end, having to move that, you know, purple block out of the way at some point. Um, I should have been able to do it by now. I'm not, this has not been optimal apparently. But let's think about it in terms of what I can do again. I can kind of redo some of these moves so that I can maybe move these blocks over a bit. What I can do is move that like this. I feel like that's going to be something key to have in our in our move arsenal in the future. <laughs> um, hmm. The thing is, it's just going to be really tough to move the red ball from here on out because of where I have the blue blocks placed in the top left corner. What I can do though is move this completely out of the way. And that will be somewhat helpful. What's going to complicate it, though, is that now I can't really move the um, the yellow block up or down. Except I don't need to, because what I can do is move this all the way up there. So this is going to be really roundabout, I think. Um, hmm. I want to try to get that green block in the top left corner. What I can do is move this out of the way, bring this down here, shift this, come on, like that, so that I can do that. 
move that out of the way. And then I can bring this over, this up, and then this out of the way, and then the, the ball has made it through. Granted, that was 37 moves, but I think, I think we had some really good principal breaks through. 4084, another another pretty cool uh, number. In addition to having that bothersome yellow block in the way, those purple and blue blocks proved to be quite a pain, didn't they? It may have been frustrating to solve, but don't you feel good now? What a relief. Oh, that speaks so true to the puzzle solver in me. Piece of cake, now let's go find more puzzles. Okay, you've completed every puzzle in the game. Smashing work. Lovely. So we've completed 120 puzzles, and our I guess our total Picarat score was 4084, which, um... I don't really have anything to compare to, so I don't know if that's like a great score or not. Either way, I'm pretty happy with it, um, especially given the lack of hint usage. Um, it occurs to me that a more optimal strategy for, I guess, preserving score would be to um, have an answer, and then before submitting it to see if you're right or wrong, use all of the hints so that you know you're 100% right before you actually submit it. Um, whereas throughout the game I've been trying to I've always submitted an answer first and then before doing so or and then after doing so start to use hints to eventually get things right um, but for what it's worth I think I think we're fine on pick rats and more importantly I'm happy to get get through all the puzzles um, I mean I'll talk more about them all when I guess we finish up the game which may actually be really soon uh, but there's really only one that I turn to the internet for um, and for the same reason, I wasn't thrilled about uh, some of the other puzzles, and that's just trial and error. Um, I'm not one for just trying over and over again, and it was in the setting of, I think I solved this in a similar way, um, abiding by the instructions I'm reading and interpreting in the way I am. Uh, so I, I, don't feel, I don't feel too bad about that. But 120 puzzles, that's a lot of puzzles. It takes a lot to come up with some of these puzzles, so I definitely applaud the the game designer's you know creativity with them. But it, it's it's crazy to imagine we're pretty much at the end. It's crazy to imagine. But at this point, um, I mean, is there anything else? What's in the journal? New, <laughs> climbing the tower. After a bit of a tumble, we came face to face with the man who abducted Raymond. Now I'm certain the treasure we seek waits at the top of the tower. I don't, are these, like, actually relevant? <laughs> are these things I should be reading? I don't know. Um, and then, as far as the mysteries go, it's just the noise and the golden apple. And I think that's going to unfold in just a moment. So, I am very, and I mean very excited, to see how everything comes together. How the story finishes and I hope you guys are too and I hope you guys enjoyed the puzzles in this episode I know it's a little bit of a longer episode, but I did want to finish up the puzzles we had remaining and For those of you that have been solving them. I hope you've enjoyed them for those of you that enjoy watching my thought process I've had plenty of time to do that and I hope you've enjoyed that for those of you that have been frustrated by my own frustration Thank you for your patience and for those of you just looking to see how the story ends like I am, uh, thanks again for tolerating my complete diversion this episode into doing everything not story related. But until the next episode, this is Moon Knight Zero, and this mission is complete.